Hi everyone, this is Pino Trogo. I'm the instructor for Design 523, a class of information design and data visualization at San Francisco State University. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm sorry I can't see you in person. And um, I, I'm not great at this video thing, but I'm gonna try. Um, I have lots of videos already, but usually you don't see my face. So I'm trying to uh, get a little closer to you by showing my face now. Um, and at times I might, I might pull my face away, but, um, so this is an introduction to the first project, which I've already started, which is the redesign of an article, uh, from the New York times on, uh, deportations. And I'm going to quickly go to the, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen. I'm going to go to, um, the, uh, uh, the assignment in iLearn. Okay, before I actually go to the assignment, let me give you a quick uh, overview of how I learn is set up. Um, I have a lot of stuff. I, I have usually more than probably you need, but um, that way I can always find it if, if I need something. Uh, so I set up the, um, the uh, weeks and the projects in this format right here. So you can see that's project one, it's three weeks, and these are actually the dates exactly. Um, and because I'm trying to keep some, uh, uh, how should I say, semblance of, of physical space, I'm, um, I'm putting the dates as Mondays and Fridays. And Fridays will be mostly the deadlines, uh, not every Friday. And Mondays will be, you know, kind of an in-between day, okay? Monday is also the beginning of the week. Friday is the, is the end of the week. Um, so that's project one, project two, project three, and project four. And clicking on one of those um, of those should take you to the right um, the right spot, and you can um, let's see. Let me get rid of the stuff, and you can always go back clicking these back to top buttons here, okay? Which is now being a little slow, but eventually we'll go there. Hopefully, yeah. Um, so hopefully you've already looked at my introduction, which was the first 30 minutes of this video. Um, and also the other things that I've sent, but let's quickly go to the, uh, to the assignment. So that would be this week, which would be Monday, I guess. And it's 1.3 flyer. And I'm gonna go through the assignment so that you see what, you know, what the stuff is, hopefully. This is not too much of a repetition, but um, I have a little handbook. It's called, uh, yeah, Small Handbook of Information Design, uh, a few principles, and uh, they're here. I'm gonna be talking more about them. Ideally, I would give you a paper version, but I don't, um, I can't right now. <laughs> okay, but the first thing is really to use pencil and paper to do some sketches, okay, before you work on the computer. Um, now there's more things, um, oh, well, let me see, maybe I'll just pick the most important ones for the project. Um, yeah, do not create, do not create, um, oops, all part just means try not to do funny stuff with type. So screening type, making it reversed, mostly, especially if it's, if it's uh, text, if it's main text. Um, and then of course, rule number nine is the one pertaining to this article that I wrote, which I hope you have read already, which is uh, basically a critique of using little men or little dots for data, okay? Um, so please read the, please read the article. Um, um, let's see, uh, don't use colors if we have to memorize them or if we have to sort stuff with them because usually you just need one color for that and sometimes just black and white. Uh, sorting your data is better than just leaving it alphabetical. Um, in this particular assignment, it's by ear, so that we should keep the order of the year. So it doesn't quite apply to that, but um let's see what else um okay let me go back i just want to get through the assignment um, all 
Okay. Here's a general project checklist, which is basically what we just looked at. Um, and also, again, look at the introductions uh, movie, the 30 minutes of my workshop. If you click on this link, you'll get, you will get the article as well, um, which I've already sent. Um, and the format is pretty straightforward. It is eight and a half by 11, both sides. Again, you'll just be doing a PDF, but it's important to remember that when you set up your file, you should always set up the front, which is page number one, as a, um, as a right side page, okay? So if you have a book, um, right, your, um, the page on the right is always an odd number. So your first page of anything is always gonna be your right side. And then uh, number two, which is even, it's gonna be a left side page. So don't set up your pages as a spread like this because that's not really reality, right? Of how these pieces would be in real paper. Um, you can use either the three column or four column grid. And let's see, I, yeah. Let's download it now. Um, and this is already a PDF, so you could open this in Illustrator and turn these into guides if you want to use Illustrator. Otherwise, just set it up in uh, in design as a um, half inch top and bottom, three quarters left and right, and uh, three three columns. And this is one pica, the gutter, which is one point uh, point. Let's see what it say. Can't remember. Yeah, point one, point sixteen. So it's a, uh, it's less than a quarter inch. Um, and of course, uh, you can use, you know, you can use a combination of. Uh, let's see if I can annotate this. You can use a combination of one column and two columns, right? to organize your stuff. And so, and the same with the um, other grid too, um, which is the four. Oops. Um, so the other one, is the four column grid. And this one, of course, you can use um, you can make it into a two column grid or a three plus one column grid, right? In many different ways. Um, and usually you want, if you're going to have different number of columns back in front, you want to do, um, typically you want to do fewer columns in the front and um, and more columns in the back. Okay, let's see. Remember that. Um, so I just actually uploaded a uh, PDF version of the article, which you would see if you click here. Um, and the trouble with that is you get ads probably, I don't know, well, for sure. So, um, and the visualizations are down below, which is showing the, um, the porter, the, the portations for different presidents, the last four, um, and the different and the distinction between um, removals and returned. And after rereading the article today, I saw that okay, um, returned is better because you can actually come back and you don't have a record on your, you know, a legal record. Whereas removal means that you're being, you know, you're being ordered to leave and you're um, basically deported and you cannot come back for a certain amount of time. Uh, now, there is a PDF version here, so if you download that, I've actually, um, oh, it's opening in the browser, okay, I've, um, I've made a more readable PDF. Still recording, good. Um, I've made a more readable PDF, and I have, I'm, going, I'm going to download it, just because it's easier. 
um, I'm downloading everything to the desktop, but you should organize your files into obviously a single folder so that you don't lose track of where everything is. Um, and just very quickly, what I did at the end of the article, I, um, I included the original page, uh, printed page from the New York Times. Um, and it wasn't actually until I read the version online and I saw the correction and realized that they had made a big blooper and this, this particular graph was, um, was off by like this much, meaning this shouldn't have been there, okay? And so this is, uh, this is showing, yeah, I think it was 180,000 and instead um, it, it was showing more than a million, a million point two or something. So somebody got confused between 118 and 18 and drew 118 little men instead of 18 little men. Um, so that's that. Um, oops. Okay. Um, So yeah, you have to read my article, otherwise, you know, I'd be here for three hours explaining this, my little theory about why you shouldn't use little men, which of course are very popular. But in this case, um, each one of these guys is, is 10,000 people, okay? So theoretically, you have to kind of do the math, although they do give the labels here. I mean, they list how many exactly they are, okay? So that helps a little bit. Um, and so it starts with Donald Trump at the top. So he was only there for one year. Uh, this is just for the four years, I mean, sorry, for the last, yes, last year, wait, I think it was last year of, yeah, last year of Clinton's presidency, Bush, um, Obama, and when this was written, the current year of, of Trump. So I'm going to go to the uh, end. Oh, shoot, I haven't uploaded the other version yet. I will do that, but I will. We'll open one that I've already, because um, I've actually added a page to this. Um, and it's this file, which I realize I haven't. Um, yeah, so this is the same file with a um, uh, that, of course, and then this this one. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There's an explanation of how these, how these bars work, but what I did on the bottom here, I just tried to reorganize it as if I was doing um, just simple bars because that's really what, what they are. I mean, they're just giant bars. Um, they could be giant squares too, different sizes. Um, but I think that arranging them in this sequence from 2000 to 2017, um, side by side and ideally having a scale here from you know 200,000 something like that um, etc would you know let you see a little more quickly what the data really is showing um, so keep in mind that these are just again four years but your data set is going to have well it goes all the way to 1927 which for the purpose of the article we don't need to look at but um, the idea would be emphasizing these four years out of those out of those four um, I mean out of those last uh, let's see 2020 years I guess at this point even though 2018 is the one the year that we have um, left and bars could be arranged of course you know like this um, horizontally which People say, okay, that's really a true bar because they're horizontal, but bars could be vertical too. So in, in Excel, these are called maybe bars and these are maybe called columns. Um, okay, so let's go back to the assignment. Um, uh, there are four links to uh, the statistical stuff. So if you go here, that's the sort of the home page of now the 2018, um, which is the latest data that they have. 
And the table that we are interested in is table 39, okay? Uh, which has, again, the removed and returned categories. So let's see if we click on it. Okay, if we click on it, it actually brings us to a table, you know, an HTML table, essentially. And this actually could be sometimes useful. Um, and notice again that it goes all the way to uh, 1892. Is it possible? Okay, I guess it does. Oh, no, actually, yeah, 1927 when they started to split the categories and keep track of it that way. Um, so what I could do with this stuff is sometimes, you know, real dirty, you know, quick and dirty, you could just select and you may be lucky and be able to uh, copy this and then open Excel. By the way, I have really, um, I have copies of Excel new and old and this particular one is the 2009. So um, some of my, yeah, so if I make a new one, um, some of my screens may look a little different. And I paste it. Um, so if I'm lucky, ah, actually I am lucky because as you can see, it came out pretty good, okay? And when I say pretty good, I mean that there is a little bit of crap. Um, Let's see on the page. Okay, right here. Okay, and that's why ideally you want to use a, um, by the way, I'm not sure if zooming in actually is gonna come out in the uh, video. Um, hopefully it will. Um, if you use Excel, it's always gonna have a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So for example, the commas are gonna be there. Um, and sometimes that can be a problem because in coding, you probably already know some characters are forbidden because they're reserved for the code. Um, so ideally you wanna save some stuff always as text, um, plain text. And one way you can do that um, is I can, I can take these cells and right now they're numbers, right? And for our purposes, sure, we need numbers, but sometimes the program doesn't care if you give a text pretending that it's numbers. So uh, the first thing we need to do is get rid of the uh, comma, um, which I believe is this one. No. Um, With a thousand separator, okay, it's not getting rid of it. And this gets rid of the decimals, which we don't need. Um, okay, the better way is to go to data at the top um, and make the, um, sorry, format, format cells. And these are numbers, so it could be general, it could be number. And if you leave it as number, you should at least get rid of the thousand separator. So that gets rid of, this, of the commas and also get rid of the decimal places there. Okay, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to get rid of this little superscript. Oops. because that too is gonna mess us up. Anyway, let me go back. I don't wanna do the whole thing in Excel now. I'll have another video about how to work with, the, with Excel. What I wanna do instead is, um, well, actually let's finish this one thought, which is we're going to just save it so it's pretty clean, looks clean, right? There is no junk. And on top of that, what I'll do is now I'll save as, and I'll save it as a comma separate file, uh, value file. Okay, so instead of Excel, I'll save it as CSV. Okay, I'll save to the desktop. Um, okay. And now I didn't name it with a, yeah, I should have named it with a better name. But now what I'll do is I'll open this with a with a text editor. 
text only editor, in my case, text wrangler, but it could be anything. Um, and as you can see, well, actually, you know, but there is something a little funny, which is that this is really what I want, but there is an extra space um, after the data. So that's not so good. Each comma separates the data. So what I'll do is I'll do a find and replace. I'll do find and I'll put a space in there. Just literally, I'll just type a space. And then here I'll leave it blank and then I'll just say replace all. Okay, so that's now nice and clean. I save it um, and also like lowercase. So I'll make everything lowercase for my three headers and I save it. Okay. I'll also do uh, save as, and I'll save it as a as a better name file. So I'll say uh, deport test. Okay. But after all that work that I just did, um, I have already done the work for this assignment, at least for the minimum stuff um, in iLearn you can find that which is the file uh, let's see so okay so you could browse through all these links but really uh, that table 39 is the one that you want um, but there's more so if you want to expand your design with some other angle you could um, Okay, so we're back in the in the assignment page, but actually I'm going to go to the week and click on the, uh, um, well, the project files is where I'm gonna try to put everything related to the assignment. Um, and, and then here in the forum, we'll keep a thread of questions and answers um, for people. And I had sent you something at, earlier um, with, uh, here there was a file. Yeah, this one, this RAM Dep 2000-2018 is already, is basically already cleaned up for that, at least the minimum, um, the minimum information that you need. So it looks like this if you open it with a text editor and it looks like this if you Excel and if you do, it will, um, you know, it'll look pretty much like the text file, right? Except that of course, here now you could make the graph as well with the text file. You you, you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, although you can open the text file with Excel, which is what I just did. All right. So I will, as I said, I will have a separate little video to show the Excel um, how to make the graph. But now I just want to. So this is the thread, and I I started it, and then I put some more information. Let's see what. Oh yeah, that's just the sketch I showed you earlier, the last page of the PDF. And so I think, um, let's go back again to the assignment and see what else I should explain. Um, so yeah, all the assignments are going to be, um, all the projects are gonna have three phases. The first two are lighter. Uh, one is the hand sketches. The second is the midpoint, which is your work in progress. And the third is the final, okay? The first are only worth 10 points each. The first two, the last is 100 points. Um, and there's some more information here about the programs and about some extra tools. Um, and yes, here there are some files, which is the very last class from the spring. And I annotated this um, and I sent it to you already. I don't know if you had a chance to open it. Um, I, um, I show what the students did last semester. Um, it's a very straightforward project, but it can become you know, super interesting and, 
and subtle because of this distinction between removals and returns. Um, and uh, so what you can expect, again, is like this kind of notes from me, hopefully more because we had a critique here, which we will not have, you know, because the classes are fully online, uh, live one, that is. Um, so um, let me just see if I can go full screen. I'll just say a few things about this. This um, there we go. These samples and um, and just send me, you know, send me an email or ask me if you want to, uh, you know, if you don't understand something or if you have a specific question. So just click on the little thing to oops to visualize my notes, and I'll just go through some of this. Um, Maybe if I annotate, it might be easier. Yeah, so this student did a line graph, which is fine for this particular case because you have dates at the bottom, so that works. Um, right now, it's not highlighting anything. Uh, bars probably are better for this particular data set because it's more physical and it's, it seems a little more tangible. Um, but lines would be theoretically fine. Um, okay. For some reason, I can't. I can't go down. Um, let me just actually, I'll escape full view because it's not letting me navigate. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so I will send uh, also information, and, and you can probably already find them in iLearn on how to do, um, well, basically it's a clustered bar chart. And the trick here, of course, is to perhaps highlight, you know, those years from the article, which in this case, the person didn't do, um, but it did put the, uh, uh, it did put the, uh, you know, showing which years are for each president, which is kind of important. It could have been shown a little more strongly. Um, okay. So this is basically my, ver you know, the, a version of the sketch I just show you. I think it's wrong to show the, the oldest one last on the right, because we tend to read from left to right. Um, So here, I think the colors are a little too close in terms of, you know, all being blue. Um, I'm not, I can't remember why they're paired, but probably that wasn't quite right. Uh, it, one thing I have to say about print versus, of course, electronic is that out of this, it's really hard to know whether something is really legible. And this looks like it wouldn't be legible because it's fairly small. And on my screen right now, it's already maybe 10 inches across instead of eight, and I still can't read it. So um, just try to print your work as you're doing it, if you have a printer, okay? Um, see what this says. I guess this is accepting the line. Um, a nice way to do um, tick marks to show, you know, kind of a major, the major steps in a chart is to put a white line on top of the bars. So the net effect would be that there will be little, little tick marks white going across, okay? And you don't see it as a line uh, because it's white on white every, everywhere else, okay? Yeah, so here there is a problem in that the scales are not so-called synchronized. So all these scales, the Y scales, uh, start at diff well, end at different points. So the bars look very similar because, um, well, because of the way the, the data is. So you should have all at the same scale going across. So this will be obviously much smaller because they're about 300,000 as opposed to 800 or 1.8 million. Okay, I'll stop now. Take a look. Um, 
there is, uh, let's see, I'll just quickly scroll to see if there is, um, so this person broke down into the, you know, the, the four different presidents and showed them as four separate charts. Um, this person did a nice job in actually doing bands, different bands to visualize again the different presidents. And uh, this is a little something that we have sort of played around having a little legend that is sort of a, a visual analog of the graph of the charts. Okay. I'm not too fond of, I think these are called um, area graphs um, because they, they're, they're just a little strange right here. I think bars align is still or just a simple line. Okay, these are not actually stacked bars, even though they look like. What we need to do here is to actually separate the bars so that maybe one bar is thinner than the other, so that they're clearly both starting at the bottom and not being one on top of the other. Um, like this, for example. Okay, and I'll have a tutorial how to do this. Um, Same idea there. Uh, this is too little because you really need a scale, okay? Um, and also, as you can see, or maybe you can't, but they're also, I believe, wrong because, yeah, because the scales are not the same. Um, that's one reason why you should have a scale because actually if you read the numbers, you'll realize, oh, this is not, this is not the same numbers. Um, Okay, this is definitely not good because it's, um, oh, wait, this is a different chart. Um, oh, this is looking at where the um, immigrants came from. Okay, and obviously North America is the highest, right? Canada and especially South, South you know, Central America. But, um, um, but this particular chart is not correct here because it's connecting things that are not related to each other, which is the different continents. So, but I know that you could do a line graph as well. So let's let's talk, okay? If if you're gonna do that, um, this particular one is nice because it's comparing. Although it got really squished, the two categories with I think citizenship. And let's see what the yeah residents and citizens. Um, I believe it's, I would have to read it. But anyway, it's basically comparing a different a different data set, right? Um, I believe it's people who have green cards. So resident aliens who have green cards and regular citizens, but I could be wrong. Yeah, so this shows you how the scales are all the same here. And that's good. Right, because they're exactly comparable. Again, though Bill Clinton being the last, um, that was an issue with the with the New York Times article too. It started with no, actually, Bill Clinton was at the bottom, right? Yeah. So they started with the right because they was top to bottom with Trump at the top. I think probably students did the same order, but I would say on the left you want the oldest, and on the right you want the. Uh, the most recent. Uh, no illustrations, okay? So make sure you just don't get bugged with illustrations. We'll leave that perhaps to later. Well, actually, so no illustrations. Uh, it just takes away time and we don't need them. Um, so, go back to the mouse. Uh, yeah, try to work on your graphs so they're not really like just out of the box and they're fairly um, unappealing as in this case. Okay, this is really, if anything, should be a line, right? These are basically all the data points, but they should be at least connected, but it, it's, it's really straight out of 
I'm not sure, probably Excel. Um, so give it a little thought and that's it. Okay, so I'll quit this. Let me see if I have something else in the assignment page. Um, there is a filing naming instruction, please read it. Um, in the first round um, and every project should have this information, which is the colophon. And that's it, okay. So this first project is quick because it's three weeks. So we have a deadline today, which is Friday, August the 28th at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. So you don't stay up too late. And the um, so deadlines will typically be on Fridays at 10 o'clock. And so for this project, the next one will be next Friday for the midpoint and the Friday after that will be the final, okay? So I will say goodbye now and have a good weekend, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.